Welcome to Beyond the Journey podcast, the podcast for mothers of exceptional children. I'm your host, Khadija Ali, and I'm here to provide you with support, inspiration, and valuable insights on raising our extraordinary kids. On each episode, we'll delve into topics that matter most to us as mothers of exceptional children. From navigating the educational system and advocating for our children's needs, to fostering their unique talents and celebrating their achievements, we'll explore it all. So if you're a mother of an exceptional child, grab a cup of coffee, find a comfortable spot, and join us on this extraordinary journey of parenthood. Let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Mothers of of Exceptional Children Beyond the Journey podcast. And today's guest is an absolute delight. I'm so excited to have her here. Her name is Natasha Robinson, and she is the most resourceful, although she says I'm resourceful, she's the most resourceful, the most compassionate person, and I am so delighted to have her here to interview her about her exceptional young lady uh, who is six years old. And a little bit a little bit about Natasha is that, uh, number one, she is a survivor. A couple of years ago, she was diagnosed with stage four lymphoma. And so she is a cancer survivor. And she's also the co-founder of an organization called Warriors Surviving. And you'll hear a little bit more about that um, later on in the podcast. And so without further ado, I want to welcome, welcome you, Natasha, to the podcast. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you for such the kind words. I appreciate it so much. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so I'm just going to jump right in as I love to do. Otherwise, I'll just talk and talk and talk and we won't get to any questions. But um, I want to ask you to take us back to... But well, first, tell us a little bit about yourself from your perspective and tell us a little bit about your exceptional child. Um, so my name is Natasha. Um, I had stage four lymphoma. I lost a lung because of the because of the cancer. Um, I have an exceptional, beautiful, wonderful, amazing six-year-old daughter named Sierra. And when she was younger, she I, I noticed some delays and she was in a program and they noticed it as well. So they got me the resources to help her w- where she needed help in. And then it turned into an IEP. When she got into school, her, first off, her school was phenomenal, but um, they helped her. When I tell you she excelled, in school, it's just crazy because it's like we got so far. So, um, yeah, that's so wonderful. So, um, if you would share with me or share with the audience, you know, what were some of the things that were going on that you noticed? Because the reason why I really wanted to have you here today, one of the reasons why is sometimes um, when you hear the word special needs or an exceptional child or a special needs child, um, you think about um, that this this child has maybe some kind of physical disability that you can see physically or cognitively or, you know, there's some kind of characteristic. And so I specifically wanted to talk to you today because if you looked at your daughter, you wouldn't say, oh, she has special needs. And even talking to her, she's very intelligent as all children are, all children are. Um, But just talking to her, you would not think 
that she has, you know, uh, exceptional needs. And so, you know, what is that like for you? Uh, or what was that like for you? Um, hearing that, you know, she might have some issues and um, if you are so inclined to talk about, you know, maybe some of the issues that she's had, you don't have to share a diagnosis if you don't want to, but just, you know, give us a little background, a little idea of, you know, what that's like. Okay. So funny thing is I used to be a daycare teacher. So as a daycare teacher, you, you observe and you look for certain things okay this, this child is excelling in here this child is lacking here so me being her mom i'm like okay you should be sitting up by now you should be crawling by now you should be saying a few words by now you're not you're not walking okay it's time to get some help mm. and luckily she was in um oh my goodness what is it called early head start Mm -hmm. And the person that was assigned to her noticed the same exact things that I noticed, but they're also professional. So they got her into early intervention. Yes. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I got to help. And I'm not going to lie. I was so nervous. I'm like, I, I see these things and I know something isn't right. But I'm like, I have to get my child to help. But I was so embarrassed and ashamed at first. But I'm like, this is my baby. I have to do it, whether I feel uncomfortable or not. And um, they came out and it was a long, when I say long journey, a long journey. Cause whatever they said, I was doing faithfully, religiously. If they said, say these words or clap your hands or let's take a few steps and hold my hands or let's walk up and down the steps. I was doing that religiously. So when they would come back on their next visit, they'd be like, oh, we see some improvement. Yes, because I'm working. I'm not gonna let my child fail. Right. Happen. Right. Right. Oh my gosh. Um, so I'm getting this. Uh, this is my first time hearing that, right? Because we talk behind the scenes so much. And, you know, I don't know, although I feel like I know you, I'm getting to see this um, other side of you where you really have always advocated for your daughter. As soon as you saw that something was going on, like you jumped uh head first in and you know got her the help that um she needs and um so what what are some of the biggest challenges you face as a mother with special needs and how do you navigate through them okay so honestly the biggest challenge i had was a child who was exceptionally wonderfully made i'm gonna use yes. it that way yes I love it. um the when the pandemic hit she couldn't get the help like she was getting the help before and then i got sick with cancer so it was a double whammy like i need to get you the help they wanted her to go get tested for autism at that time but i couldn't do it because i was so ill and i didn't have the support so that was one of probably the hardest challenges i had is to still be that parent and make sure she was good where she had the help that she needed but also make sure I was good too. Very right, true. right, exactly. So that and that's that's so good, right? Because sometimes um, in that in those times, and ooh, it's so difficult. It's so difficult. I feel like um, also being a cancer survivor to know when to put yourself first. Mm -hmm but also still make sure that your child has what they need. And then for that to be like happening during COVID, mm -hmm. um, man, that is crazy. Um, so that leads me to the next question is like, how do you prioritize self-care while you balance caregiving, you know, for your daughter? So when she was younger, Self-care was out the window because, again, I was sick and she was little and she needed help. But now that she's in school, uh, yeah, you go to school. That's my self-care time. I can do whatever I want to do. This is mommy's time. No, well, not even mommy's time. This is Tasha's time because I had to separate the two. Ah. This, is, I'm not, this is not me being a mom right now. This is me focusing on me. 
Right. So I do that when she's either in school or when she goes with her dad. And when right. she goes with her dad, it's crazy because I don't have to worry about getting you ready for school. So. <laughs> right, 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 right. I think that's so important too. I mean, especially when when um, you have a child with special needs, and you know you can send them send them to school. Uh, that does give you the time to like, you know, chill or you know get your nails done or just relax. Even you don't have to necessarily do anything for self care, right? Like self care mm-hmm. could be, I'm going to take a nap while she's in school. That's self care. That's my favorite one, just a sidebar. <laughs> it's mine too. <laughs> it's mine too. Um, so how did you, no, I'm not gonna say how do you. Can you share, share a positive or uplifting experience that has occurred as a result of raising um, your beautiful, exceptional beauty? Oh, so many. that rewarding feeling when they pick up what you put down Mm -hmm. or when you see in school oh they understand it okay cool wonderful great we got it me and her teacher we're we're a team effort she brings the homework home we do this i call her teacher i'm like hey how can i help support her at home besides the homework so I got flashcards and stuff like that. And just watching her just excel is the most beautiful, rewarding thing in the world. Because you got it. It might take a little bit longer, but you got right. it. Right. And it makes me so proud of her. Right, right, right. And I think sometimes, um, you know, you will hear, at least I hear a lot of times, um, especially when I'm taking goose to like, volleyball practice or we might be hanging out with another like exceptional family and we will like celebrate the most simplest thing right like they bowled they hit one pin and what what I always think about in the back of my mind right because somebody else might be like okay they hit a pin big deal but what's always in the back of my mind when it comes to that is I know when my daughter was born, I didn't know she had Down syndrome. And I didn't know a lot about Down syndrome. And so I didn't know what she was going to be capable of, right? And so to see her, you know, not only reach the milestones, the things that you talked about that um, your baby had with the delays, like it's really important to celebrate them even for the most... We, there's so many things that people take for granted, you know, when their child is born that is not exceptional. It's like your child walks at a year old or, you know, they potty train, you know, right on time. And so when you have a child with exceptional needs, when they do something, when they do anything, you're like, yes, yes. You know, and I was, I think I was talking about this on the last episode where, No, this was a conversation I was having with a mother at volleyball practice. And I was saying that, you know, Goose kept saying she wanted a phone. And and I'm like, she don't know what to do with a phone. Well, I was totally wrong because she knows how to text with her phone. She knows how to go on YouTube, look up songs. I mean, she knows how to do a lot of things. And, you know, that's something that is like, oh my God, like I'm thinking she can't do this stuff, but she absolutely can. And like you mentioned, you know, it may take a little bit longer or you might have to explain it in a different way, but like there's a lot that our our kids can get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that, you know, for self-care, she goes to uh, her dad's and that gives you downtime. And so how do you navigate feelings of guilt or uncertainty, you know, especially being that, you know, you have had this experience with cancer, you know, how do you navigate if you do feel guilty or if you do feel uncertain about the future or about her, 
you know, walk through life? Like, how do you work through those feelings that may come up around that? Well, uh, one, I'm a believer of the Lord. And um, I have to give myself grace. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all, you know, and it's okay that we do. It's all a learning experience. So I cannot beat myself up over the fact that she has these things going on or or it's just I'm overwhelmed as a mom. It's just like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Is she going to get this? And I have to give myself grace and give myself the opportunity to see what happens. So I can't dwell on what could have, should have, would have. Right, right, exactly, exactly, exactly. So I have a question, one last question, you know, before we wrap up. Um, What are some resources that you have found most helpful in supporting both you and your precious baby girl? early head start was phenomenal okay and then there was um what was it called oh my goodness i'm having a whole brain fart (laughs) it'll come back to you early early intervention early it wasn't early intervention well that too that too um gonna go get her tested for the iep and they letting me know Okay, this is what, 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 okay, once she gets in school, this is how it's gonna transition. But it was another program. Oh my goodness. Mabel Moore's program. There you go. I'm sorry. The Mabel Moore's program, they were phenomenal. She was already in the program, but when they realized that I was sick, they mm-hmm. made sure that I had an air conditioner. They made oh. sure I had uh, household items. They made sure I had food. I was okay. I was set to make sure she had clothes, shoes, everything under the sun. So, um, yeah, my uh, uh, cancer is a very, very horrible thing, but it had its perks because, yeah, they help out a lot. You found people that will help you in the community mm-hmm. um, to make sure that, you know, she was okay and that you had uh, things that you needed because, um, uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, man, I don't know. It's bringing up some things for me <laughs> that I'm going to have to work through around, you know, being uh, a parent and, you know, still a couple of years later, still having to recover and, you know, make sure that I'm resting and, you know, have everything I need and then have making sure she has everything she needs. And I think uh, one of the other mothers I had on here, she talked about that too, about how important it is to have community, you know, mm-hmm. cause sometimes she may have to run out and go and run an errand and, and you know, sometimes the kids, they don't wanna, you know, go. And so uh, she was saying that, you know, she has all these neighbors in her, in her uh, neighborhood that will like look out for her daughter you know, so um, I think that's very important for anyone who is raising a child with special needs to make sure that they have some kind of community of people mm-hmm. that can help um, help you, you know, whether it's navigate resources, find resources, you know, like you said, you got uh, food, they made sure you had food, an air conditioner and, and clothes and that's very, very important just in general, raising a child with exceptional needs. But I think especially it's important when you are, um, you know, going through an experience with a disease and, you know, you're trying to balance and juggle so many different things. Um, so I, one last question I do want to ask. I know I said that the last question was the last question. <laughs> but cool. this is absolutely the last question. If, if one mother hears this podcast, what is one thing you would want her to know? Give yourself grace. Everything's going to be fine. And remember, like, don't forget about you. 
you have to take care of you. You cannot be good to your kids. If, and this is for any parent. You cannot be good right. to your kids if you're not good to yourself. Just like they tell you on an airplane, you got to put the mask on you first. Oh, now. Everybody else. That's it. So That's take care of you. Love up on you. That self-care is important. The burnout is real. You don't want to find is. out what it's like. So take care of yourself. Yes, yes. Thank you. That is absolutely solid, solid, solid advice. Solid wisdom. I want to thank you so much for um, sharing that. And if we can reach one mother that's listening to this podcast, uh, this is all worth it. Um, I want to thank you so much for being here and sharing your story, um, sharing, you know, the highs, the lows and everything in between. And, you know, I would love to have you come back. Oh, you have an event coming up. So tell us a little bit before we go. Tell us a little bit about Warrior Surviving. So um, if anyone um, needs support around that, they can reach out to you. I do have an event coming up. It's actually tomorrow, um, 1 p.m. PST, 2 p.m. MST, 3 p.m. CST, and 4 p.m. EST. Um, this particular event is for a, ca a cancer patient who is fighting hard and her family. And we're trying to raise money, raise awareness so people will know about what cancer is and how it affects the body. It's also to raise money for them so that they can help with the medical bills and the medicine and, you know, just making sure they stay afloat. Because when one of us fight, we all fight. Um, we are on TikTok. We are on Instagram. We are on Facebook. But the event will be taking place on TikTok. On, the, on Warriors underscore surviving. Okay. And that's how they can find you on um, TikTok and IG. And Facebook as well. But the and, oh, and Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. All righty. And IG. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. And again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, everyone, please reach out and find Natasha on TikTok, Facebook, and IG at warriors underscore surviving. Thank you so much, Natasha. Thank we'll you so you much all. for having me. We'll see you all next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And I'm genuinely excited to have you as a part of our Beyond the Journey community. Together we can make a difference in the lives of exceptional children, one story at a time. I'll see you next time.